Hello, uh, my name is Dimitri. Um, I'm uh, with uh, ukidstoys.com and we're going to be doing another uh, assembly video today, instructional video, uh, with uh, new, well, kind of new U-Gears model, uh, SAFE. Uh, this is one of the uh, more complicated models. Uh, it will require some experience, uh, but if you don't have any experience, you can still assemble it, so no worries. Uh, we're just going to go over step by step uh, through the instructions uh, and try uh, to answer any questions if you guys have afterwards. Uh, give you some little tips and tricks uh, during the assembly and uh, hopefully it will help uh, some of you out uh, to complete the project. Uh, so we're going to go over the tools that I'm going to be using. The first tool is a box cutter, regular box cutter that I'm using. You can use scalpel, you can use some kind of sharp knife, scissors, whatever you prefer to cut the toothpicks if needed to be. Uh, the second tool is the pliers. Uh, I use the pliers to pull the toothpicks out if I have an issue with them being stuck or uh, broken, then I can just grab it with the pliers and pull it out because by the uh, uh, little bit hard to do it with the fingers, especially if you use some lubrication. Uh, speaking of lubrication, I do have a tea candle here. I'm using it to uh, lubricate the parts, uh, specifically gears. Um, because uh, some of the operation will need to be a little bit smoother. Uh, the tea candle is recommended use uh, because uh, it's a uh, wax rather than oil, uh, so it doesn't get absorbed too much into the plywood and uh, helps the operation a little bit. Uh, another tool that I'm using is the uh, little file. Uh, the file helps if uh, when you break off the gears or some kind of parts, and there's some uh, plywood or imperfections left on there that you can remove it by filing it off. And then uh, the last one, uh, just a lot of you guys been asking for uh, some uh, help with the toothpicks. Um, I just went to the store, uh, Target to be specific, bought this box of 800 count toothpicks uh, made in China, uh, Target, Target brand. Uh, these are just a regular toothpick that you use uh, day to day. Um, just two, two tips on both sides. Make sure you get those. Uh, the other ones with uh, one sided uh, will not work. And they are standard, so you can use them as a replacement if you run out. Uh, once again, they do have some tolerance, so if, uh, let's say the toothpick doesn't go through very well, uh, try to use a different one rather than uh, trying to force this one in. Uh, you try to force it, it will get stuck, it will break, uh, you can hurt yourself. Uh, so, as I said, if, uh, if it's going a little bit too hard, it's fine. But if it's not going through, don't try to force it in. Just pull it out and use a different one. And that's when the pliers come handy. Uh, so, uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the assembly. Um, uh, once again, if you're going to have any questions, just feel free to... Uh, Post them underneath the video uh, in the comment section, or you can email me at uh, ukidstoys uh, at gmail.com. Uh, once again, it's uh, ukidstoys at uh, gmail.com, and I can answer any questions and help, hopefully help you out with the assembly. Okay, so uh, here we have a model safe. Uh, this is the uh, Small box, about seven by seven by seven inches uh, cube uh, with a three digit combination lock. Uh, normally, uh, assembly does take five to six hours. Uh, if you don't have any experience, we're gonna try to finish it a little bit sooner because obviously I don't want you to be bored for six hours in front of the video uh, monitors. Uh, so uh, we're gonna go through it. I'll try to cover as many details as possible. And if uh, any questions, uh, leave the comment or email it to me. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start by opening it up. Going to have it facing towards you. Take the boxes away as we don't need it. So the opening process is pretty easy. Hopefully not, not, none of you will need help with that. Uh, just remove the plastic. You got the uh, setup instructions there. You do have uh, eight pieces of uh, plywood, eight boards. Um, here's the instructions, and uh, you will find some toothpicks and rubber bands in there as well. 
As you can see, there's not that many toothpicks. Once again, if you're gonna be short, if you're gonna break some, no worries. Uh, you can use just a regular uh, Target branded or whatever brand you prefer. Uh, they all should be standard and should not differ much one from the other. So now we do have eight planks, so eight boards, and we're gonna go ahead and start with instructions. So the uh, regular instructions, as I mentioned before, uh, they do mention, uh, first of all, if you see exclamation point in a red circle, uh, stop, uh, make sure to read or pay attention to what it says, uh, and that uh, might be a little bit, uh, some kind of instruction, special instructions that uh, might affect operation or assembly. Uh, the second uh, note on here is to use the tea candle wax for the uh, assembly. You can use just a toothpick to uh, to put it on. You can just stick the uh, gears in there or you can use a finger, whatever one you prefer. Uh, second one, uh, third one, sorry, the uh, chose to use the knife to cut the toothpicks. As I said, I do use a regular box cutter. Uh, the little sign with where it says add plus tools, uh, that means those are spare parts. You can put them aside for future, just in case if they break off or if they break off during the assembly. Uh, the fifth sign on here shows that sometimes you will have a little uh, picture with the uh, box cutter or knife uh, showing that you will need to cut the parts out. That usually happens with the smaller. Uh, parts, uh, they're somewhat hard to take out uh, from the uh, boards, but uh, that's, that, that's why they recommend to use the knives. And then the last uh, is the chose the sandpaper. Uh, as I said, I do use the file, uh, works a little better, but sandpaper is good. On here you see on the same page a picture of the uh, toothpick, uh, just shows you the regular standard dimension. Uh, it's not a proprietary information, so uh, as I said, a regular toothpick will work uh, with the assemblies. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the uh, assembly. So the first piece is, uh, it says boards number two, three, and four, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, they should be easily identified uh, because of the big, large pieces on here. So I have four, three, and two on here. Okay, then uh, the first one, we do need piece number 12 and piece number two. So uh, all, all the boards are marked. You do have <clears throat> back face and you do have a front face, right? So the back uh, face, uh, you will see little uh, burn marks on there or a little bit darker colors where the uh, cuts are at. Uh, these marks are done by the laser and then the front face uh, of the board, I should say, not necessarily the front face of the part because sometimes you do want to uh, emphasize uh, the cutouts and emphasize the burn marks on the uh, assembly so you can see it better or present it a little bit better. So and this would be the front face. Uh, and uh, as a recommendation, when you make or push the parts out, push them from back to front unless you're planning to use that uh, back surface as the uh, front uh, front face on the assembly. So pretty much whatever is going to be your front, put it away from you and push the part out that direction. Uh, that way it will help you eliminate uh, any kind of peels marks on the um, uh, plywood and it's going to be nice and neater um, part that you're done with. it. So those are little tips with the boards and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start. So we're looking for number 12 and number two. So uh, everything is marked on, uh, on the board, so you'll, you'll see the numbers uh, next to the part. So this is number two. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, in this case, we'll do the front face. I like this one a little bit better than the back face. So we're gonna go towards around the way and then pull the parts out. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, you might see some a little right here. I got a little peel on here uh, that is visible. So because it's gonna be on the inside, you're not gonna see. This is on the outside, so this is uh, good to go. And then we need the part uh, number 12. We're gonna put the boards aside for a little bit. Now, 
front face, back face of the board, but because there's a little design, this I want to be this on the outside, I want to be visible, so that's gonna be my front face of the assembly. So I'm gonna turn the board around and uh, push that part out. Don't worry if your board breaks, uh, as long as the part doesn't break, you should be good. So I'm gonna put that aside, and then it shows, uh, use this, uh, this is a front, and uh, you gotta match the numbers. So we got uh, four, th three, five on here, and we got, so three towards you. Oh, apologize for my statement regarding front and back. Uh, I'm gonna have to use this one. Uh, the front face will be the opposite side. That's gonna be the back because of the numbering system. Uh, so we have three towards you, five to the right, and then the board number 12, uh, your number three should match the number uh, three sign on the base piece. And we're gonna go ahead and insert the board. Some of the parts are a little bit hard to insert, but just put a little bit force to it and they should go in. All right, so we got our first piece of assembly together. Uh, the next step, number two, is uh, board number 11. That's what we're looking for. And then that's uh, same thing. This is our front. I'm gonna have to go ahead and push it out. And then uh, it looks like we don't need to clean anything. And this is on the opposite end. We do have six. Uh, that is, I think I said four before. And we have six on here. So we just uh, put six to six. And then your number five right here will match the number five. That's, those are Roman numerals. They will match one another. And the same thing here. We just make sure everything is sit it nice and all the way to the end so you don't have any gaps you might have to push these little locks one by one you might hear some uh, squeaky noises but as long as it's not cracking you should be okay and then the next is piece number seven uh, that's on the board number three uh, same thing pull push rather than pull And then number seven, you have uh, number two here, number one here, and we'll match same direction. One to one, two to two. It's easier when it's facing you, uh, that way you, you see what you're doing. Uh, you just make sure everything is sitting nice and perfect without any gaps. All right, we got the box ready. And then uh, the next step is uh, we're using number one. Uh, plate number one. Take it out. And uh, plate number one goes, we have numbers five on here. So find the uh, parts where the uh, number, f uh, Roman number five, uh, numeral five is uh, all of them should be on the same side and you insert that piece once again don't remember this is a front face uh, we got to make sure that uh, 
we have all the pieces so the base is on the bottom uh, and you have uh, these little holes facing up all right just to make sure you insert it the correct way otherwise you will have an issue with the assembly of uh, other parts later on because everything should fit only one way and I'm gonna go ahead and try to put this one in the parts might skew a little bit so you might need to adjust it slightly here and there All right, and we almost have our box ready. So uh, just make sure you got all the pieces it completed, completely inserted, and. Uh, Part of the safe is complete. I, will, I, will, I want to say we're done with the assembly, but that's so not true. The next step, uh, we do need boards number one, two, and six. And uh, the step number five uh, that we're looking at, we're using pieces number three, uh, which are located, uh, looks like on the board number two, which we just used. There's uh, four pieces right here, number threes. So just push them out. Once again, don't, don't worry if the actual boards break because uh, we're not, that piece is gonna be discarded, but uh, the actual puzzle pieces should stay intact. So when you break it off, just make sure you don't damage them. And then those are go on inside of the box. There's uh, little holes right here. One, two, three, four on the back. So they get inserted in there with a little hook towards the back. And then uh, the little part, boss, a little gets inserted into that hole. So four parts, a little hard to reach in there. And you insert it in and then push it into the little hole. So just like this. All right, so you go the hook to the, towards the back. Uh, and then you insert it into the hole. And push it towards the wall so the little part gets inserted in there. Same thing, just repeat four times. Don't forget it's on the back. A little hard to assemble but manageable without any problems. Just wanted to mention this is plywood so it the temperatures and humidity might affect it a little bit, uh, so some pieces might be a little bit hard, harder to insult, uh, insert, some of them are going to be a little bit easier, uh, depending on your levels of humidity and such. Alright, let me just fix one piece, looks like it didn't get inserted completely. And we're good. All right, uh, so we got four parts here. Next uh, step is number six, and we find uh, 62s. They're on the plates, uh, little boards of number six. So right here, and uh, 62s gonna be right here. And there's plenty of them, there's some additional ones that uh, you can use in case if you break these. So we need, in this case, we do need four for now, for number six step. We're gonna take that plate out of here completely and push the parts out. One, two, three, four. Okay. 
once again you do have some extra pieces so in case if you break it or uh, damage it a little bit you can always use a new piece so this one goes in the top plate um, as you look in, inside the box there's two slots they should go towards the top so this is going to be your top plate um, right here so once again there's two slots that you're looking there should be up and uh, closer surface that's going to be top face and uh, here we need to insert these number 62s into little diagonal slots up on top and actually I apologize there is not four there's eight of them so it's uh, four on each side at the top of the box so we'll need four more there you go and then just one Gonna start with the back because this is a harder to reach areas, especially with my big hands. But we'll manage it eventually. Uh, another tip when you insert the parts, uh, make sure they're normal, perpendicular to the surface, because otherwise. Uh, they might get stuck a little bit if they're not all right then I got two parts here you go. I mentioned not too perpendicular, so a little bit too hard to put them in. So I'm gonna redo this one again. And it looks like I'm having trouble. So let's see. Let me grab another piece and we'll see if that was the issue. Once again, it's a little bit in the corner, so it might be a little bit too tough to, to do it. All right, I will need some helper. So I'm just gonna find a piece of plywood that I'm not gonna use, which probably the piece that I just put aside. And I'm gonna use that to push on that little part. just to give it more surface area because the print, to do it with the finger is a little bit tough. And we're almost in. Another way you can probably insert those in if you remove that plate and put those in again. So I finally got it in. I'm gonna go on the other side and struggle a little bit there. Kidding, should not struggle. This is what makes it fun. Here you go, this one goes in much easier. It was just a little slot that was not perfect.
And we've got two more pieces left. Obviously, it's much easier to insert them if they're closer to you. Here you go. Okay, we're back. Uh, then we need, we're on the plate number one. And we'll need three of these pieces right here, uh, front and back. So uh, this is our front, this is our back, although it's opposite on the actual cuts. But once again, as I mentioned before, we do want to emphasize some cuts to make it look very nice and sharp. Remove all the burrs, edges. Uh, you can use the file or you can just use your fingers. They're usually pretty easy removable. So we got three pieces and we we'll just put them in like this into the assembly. Make sure there's two holes that they match the uh, uh, holes on the actual uh, housing or actual box and it should go fairly easy. So one, two, three. If it doesn't go easy, that means these little pieces, uh, 62s that you just inserted, they're not uh, completely inserted in there, so you will need to work them in a little bit harder. Um, and these pieces, number 69s, should go in just like this. So we got step number seven completed, and then we're looking for number 67, uh, which are gonna be also on the plate number six that we just did. And uh, 67s are right here. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six of them. One. Push them out. Or pull them out. Uh, in this case, it doesn't matter because uh, they are. Uh, Both, both sides are visible. So we got six pieces, and then uh, these go to lock this uh, parts in place. So you gotta have that little uh, hook, no, not a, not a hook, it's just a little slot facing towards inside of the box. Uh, so you'll see there's like a longer piece and a little shorter of bosses. So the longer piece is going to go through that double uh, unit, so to say, the, the actual plate that you just put in and the uh, surf, uh, surface of the top cover. So they should go completely in. Uh, just make sure that the holes line up, otherwise you will have trouble of inserting it. Once again, as you can see, this plate moves a little bit, so that's the reason why we're inserting these uh, little pieces to make sure that we lock the movement in and it doesn't go in. So here's... You might wanna support it a little bit from the bottom. Uh, so if you push too hard, you're not gonna break any surfaces. Uh, you shouldn't be breaking anything because uh, the parts are sturdy enough. But just in case, better be safe than sorry. All right, so now we have the box. There is a little picture on there to check to make sure that everything is okay. And we got it together, perfect. Uh, we move on to the next page. Uh, there, we're gonna go ahead and uh, 62 pieces, number 62s again. Uh, we're gonna do, uh, looks like left side. And then uh, similar, similar scenario. And then we're gonna do the right side afterwards. So let's go ahead and do left. So we need eight pieces again.
and we got them all out put the rest of them in inside and then we're gonna go do left uh, I'm gonna start with the back as I said they're a little hard to put in so starting from the back and work your way towards the front it's a little bit easier And because we have pieces on the top, it's already a little bit harder to put it in. So you kind of have to slide it a little bit sideways and then push it in. And here you go. One. Two, three, four, I guess. As I said, I find it to be this corner piece is a little bit harder than everything else because of their location. Once again, it's still manageable and I'm trying to get my, here we go. And then this. Four pieces are in and then front and we're almost there here we go. Then one more piece. Once again, that one a little bit tougher because you do have another piece sitting right next to it, but it looks like I'm not having any issues with that. I'm gonna put that face on top or towards the top. Um, back to pieces number 69. Push three of them out. Clean them off. Put them into these little the hooks that we just pushed through. Make sure the holes line up. And we're gonna leave one off, the one that up front, closer to the front. Once again, you can adjust them and just initial preset setting up them and then if they don't go in just kind of like try to slide it underneath a little bit and then move them around there you go one there you go we got them all in and then um, now we're looking for pieces number one, two, three, uh, 66, two of them, which are on the same number six plate as the pieces 67. You can push the black out just to make it easier. And these uh, 66, they do have additional hook on there compared to 67 on the little hook right here. So that's gonna be used later on in the assembly. And uh, these gonna go uh, 
towards the back on here and then uh, you put it in with that little hook onto the double wall piece or the assembly double assembly and that hook's going to be used for a little uh, shelf that you're going to have on the inside of the unit so just carefully insert it and you should be pushing it all the way in so our second one here you go nice and neat and then numbers uh, 67 uh, we will need four more of them so originally on the top face we had six on the side faces we're gonna have only four units. and those are used to clean them off just to make sure you don't have those pieces on there and then it's the same thing as we did with the top we're gonna have a longer piece inserted it perfect longer piece inserted through the double uh, plate so one plate on top and then one on the bottom and the shorter piece obviously only on one side then we got all four of this once again make sure you have your holes lined up Otherwise, they will not go in. All right. We got that side nice and perfect. And then we're going to deal with the uh, right side, which are the same thing. We're using pieces number 60. Uh, two uh, eight pieces as a holders and then uh, 69s with a little plate 66 and 67 so uh, we're gonna go ahead with uh, number 62 six seven and just an extra piece fell out and then this one broke off so I might as well use that spare piece all right this is gonna be garbage and the same thing let's start from the back because that's gonna be the toughest one toughest one to put in and then you move towards the front it's gonna be easier and easier Obviously, you can change the sequence a little bit to your liking uh, rather than follow the instructions all the way to the point. But obviously, if you encounter a little problem or issue, you're on your own. <laughs> we will try to help you out. But uh, as I said, following the directions and instructions is much easier than trying to figure out what you did wrong later on in the process so I got that one's almost in and uh, I'm gonna use that plate to give me a little bit more leverage So I'm just using the part of the 62 block 
as a leverage uh, just to push those in a little bit further as I said they have to be in completely the other thing you can do you can use the file and file them off a little bit to get them in nice and smooth so I'm gonna go ahead and try that approach just gonna use a flat file sandpaper if you don't have a file and then uh, because of that little cutout that's why it's a little bit hard to put it on not not I shouldn't say cut out a little um, piece where the connection point is at so I'm just removing those connection points and it should go in much smoother there you go that's what we're gonna do from now on Once again, as you've seen, that you can still insert them without filing it down, but uh, it will make your life a little bit easier if you do. So, but this one's a little bit tougher. two pieces left at the front and we got this part completed uh, going to the next step which are these 69 plates once again you need three of them parts where you do have the walls. If you don't have the wall there, don't put it in. Because you will have a hard time to put it put the door in at the end of the assembly. So here you go. And then we're using two of number 66s and we can throw out that block as we're not going to need it anymore it's going to be empty one and then two those going to go towards the back uh, once again they're going to be holding the shelf make sure the holes are aligned Perfectly. Now I got it. And once again, they should go all the way in and uh, snap right into place. There you go. Uh, and then the last pieces for uh, 67, the last four that you got left on the block. Them. Done. 
So now you have almost your toolbox assembled. Moving on to the next page. And the next page is going to be uh, putting number 65s. Uh, they're located, so this is done with a 67 block. And we're going to go find 65s. Those are on a plate 6. I apologize, they're not on a plate 6. No, they are. Here you go, right in the center. I haven't seen them. This piece we can put aside. Uh, there's some spare components on here, so you might want to keep it for later on. I'm going to push that block out completely. Um, notice that I haven't used a knife yet completely. Although the pieces are small, they're still manageable to pull them out, push them out without using the knife. Uh, shouldn't be a big problem. And then we can throw a piece out and then these go all the way in the back. Um, they're like a little hooks. Uh, into those uh, four pieces that are sticking out with uh, little hooks, so to say, right? So we're lacking those uh, four, these four, one, two, three, four. We're lacking them down by inserting this little pieces number 65 into, into them. So they go in and one, two, just make sure they sit nice and tight. Three and four. The pictures are very self-explanatory, so you should not have any issues or problems with it. And then we got numbers 50, 58, uh, which is going to go as lags to my assumption. And numbers 58 are on plate 7, looks like it. Yep. So we have plate 7, and there's a block with 58. As you see, you don't need any other additional tools. Everything is comes with a kit, everything that you need. And now uh, let's see, these four pieces go into the base plate, uh, your bottom plate, um, right onto the, um, there's one, two, three, four parallel holes. There's two more additional ones, don't do those. So we got four holes that are parallel. And once again, make sure you want to file it off a little bit. Just uh, so it goes in a little bit smoother on two sides. That's what I'm gonna do just to help myself out a little bit. And so they will go in slightly smoother than we've experienced it before. Don't file too much because those pieces do hold something and you don't want it to file too much so uh, they're just going to be, part's going to be flying out. And then uh, we need parts number 14, they're going to be on the block with a little, on the plate on this one with uh, covers or uh, front face. Um, and then those parts are right here in the corners. All right, on a plate number 14, there's one, two, three, four parts. So you just, uh, this is our front, plate, uh, front face of the plate. So you don't want that to be damaged because these pieces are gonna be on the bottom uh, you're not gonna see them and uh, so I would suggest to push them out from the front towards the back rather than the other way uh, 
because those pieces you're not gonna see they're gonna be on the base um, but this is gonna be a front cover so it's gonna be visible and you don't want anything sticking out or peeling off so this is gonna get put in make sure you put it the right direction uh, there is a uh, well you can only put it one way you won't be able to insert it the other direction and then you just snap it snap it in place You might want to hold these pieces that you just inserted with your finger from inside because if you push into these pieces too hard uh, you're gonna insert them back in or push them back out so right here and that's our four legs of the safe make sure everything nice and tight we're done and you can check there's one two three four legs on here all right our next step we're gonna go into the assembly of the lock so this box we can put aside right now uh, and just look at it from far away clean off our surface a little bit push all the pieces to the side and we're gonna go we need plates five seven and eight uh, we're gonna start with the pieces number 26 and 25. So this is our 26 and 25 pieces. Um, this case, they're somewhat fragile pieces, so I do recommend to use your scalpel or your knife there to uh, cut them out because uh, we've had instances where they do break and uh, you just need to look for little marks where the connections connection points are at and kind of put a little pressure on there with the knife to get the parts out. Uh, first time I did it, I managed not to break it and uh, it was still uh, good. So, But if you put too much pressure on it, there is a chance that you can snap these off and unfortunately there is no extras in there. But. Uh, in that case, just send us email, we'll see what we can do and how we can help you out. Uh, and then uh, I'm gonna file these little uh, portions where they connect off. And uh, piece 25 goes into 26 one towards the other so this is 25 and this is 26 with the little slot right here and open it up a little bit and push it push the 26 in by slightly opening 25 once again just make sure you don't force too much because there is a chance that they can break off a little bit or not break off a little bit but completely snap part and just like this nice and easy without too much force put them together so here you go and then uh, we do need number 47 for it and number 47 can be found on plate number seven let's look for that it's our second plate and uh, 47 there's pieces one two three four so we start with one uh, there is a numeral one uh, you uh, face uh, when you face uh, when this piece facing you Make sure these two bosses are on the right hand side, on your right. Uh, use that little assembly that you just did and uh, push it, put it through the hole away from you.
might go a little bit tough, but in order to eliminate that, I'll just use one of the toothpicks. We do have a little lubricant, so I usually cut a little piece out and uh, rub it onto that piece to push it in. And I would go all the way along the length of that assembly to make sure that the the other part will go in smoothly. So we got one these little bosses on the right when it's facing towards you that one sh should be on top the Roman numeral one. So I'm just gonna go a little bit smoother when you push it in all the way in. Next piece is number 30. Number 30 can be found on plate number 8. This is plate number 8. And uh, this one, there's two of those. Uh, with a little ding here on to, to facing right when you're facing you. And you do need to cover these two surfaces as recommended in the manual with Vax. These are rotating parts, rotating pieces. They're going to be rubbing against each other. So you just grab a little piece of wax, just kind of like rub it off on one side and rub it on the other side to make the operation smoother. I apologize for the noises in the background. I do have the window open because it is a little bit of warm today. We're in Chicagoland area and uh, Today is November 10th, uh, looks like uh, there's about 65 degrees outside, which is nice. Same thing on here, we rub both surfaces with uh, wax, just to give it a little nice smoother surface finish, and a little lubrication during the operation. This, this is part of our combination lock. So once again, this little cutout piece on top, a uh, little ding towards the right side and you push uh, that assembly through you do need to work it up work it a little bit I put too much uh, lubrication on here, so I can't really see. There you go. Then we have number two. From plate number seven there's a roman number two which is uh, piece number 46 uh, once again little uh, number towards the top little uh, bosses to, towards the right uh, make sure you lubricate both surfaces front and back top and then you push it through the hole again and you can see how much smoother it went through then we need number 30 again same thing little lubrication front and back and then a little ding towards the right side with a little cutout slot here on top and make sure you insert it so uh, it's the same direction as the previous piece that you put it, put in. And just give it a little push, a little pressure, and it should sort of slide right in. And then we off to number uh, 45, which is number three. Same thing, more loop, wax, uh, both sides. And then uh, 
same direction, number towards the top, the uh, two bosses on the right, kind of to match the other three pieces. Then we're going into number 29. Both faces with a lubricant. And then this one, we're gonna go, remember to keep the other pieces with the bosses towards the right. And then this piece with a little hook, a uh, little, uh, 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 little hook to the left, a little ding to, to the right. And once again, the same direction as the other ones. Put it in, and then the last one's gonna be number 44. More lubricant, wax, both sides. The uh, two bosses towards the right, uh, number towards the top. Uh, make sure you're holding this piece same direction. There you go, we got four of them done. So there's a little picture to emphasize that you have number one, two, three, four, uh, and then two numbers 30s and uh, 29 sandwich in between. You're supposed to go only a specific uh, uh, sequence. So, and uh, just uh, don't push them too hard together and work at that centerpiece a little bit. So you'll see a little movement on there, front and back. So we got this piece done, completed. I'm gonna use napkin just to clean off my hands a little bit as I do have wax on them so uh, I don't transfer that wax to the rest of the wood and uh, make it look not too good, especially on the outside pieces. So our next step is uh, another assembly of multiple small pieces. Uh, they are, we're gonna start with the number one and those uh, Pieces 53 through 56 are located on plate number seven, which we just used. Uh, so I got one, two, three, four, four of them here. Just carefully push them out. There's a little internal piece on there that uh, you don't want to break, so don't push on that. So we got these four out. I have one piece falling out, so I'm gonna put it aside. Then we have number 40, well, we don't need 43 yet, but uh, we do need 52 and 51. So 52 and 51 are in the same plate right here in the corner. I'm gonna put this one aside. 51 is a little like waves on there, and then 52 is uh, with two holes. I'm gonna throw that black out so it's not on my way anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and use file as recommended by the instructions to cut off that little uh, connection points on the circular pieces. There's one and there's a second one right here. They're almost right next to each other. And then the same thing on the piece number 51. Uh, just to make sure it's, if you can, I don't know if you can see, there's like a little plywood sticking out, a little uh, fibers that I'm removing. Uh, for a nice and smooth part and then also it is recommended to use a uh, on the outside little wax so I'm just gonna stick them into the candle and wax them up a little bit we finally got to our first toothpick so I'm just gonna take one and then we start with piece number one, Roma numero one. Uh, make sure that little, uh, kind of like a wave portion, or uh, let's say the number, it's gonna be easier identification, the number that you have on there is facing towards top and right. So, and you start inserting the toothpick through, and my fingers are still, it should go through without any problems. 
Then we put a 52 piece. My fingers are covered a little bit in wax, so I'll need to take it off. Then we got piece number two. They all facing about, uh, the number should face the same direction. So they all should go in nice and smoothly. Then we got 51. That one doesn't look like it needs any specific direction. And then number three. And then number four. And there is no, nothing in between three and four. Uh, should look like this, should rotate easily, well, somewhat easily on a toothpick. And then uh, we'll need part number 28. Which is located on uh, number eight. I just missed it, and it's right here, right on the top. Two of them, you just need one for now. It's nice and clean, uh, with a little hole in the center towards you. Use the assembly that you just created, uh, with the number one facing towards you also. Insert it on the right hand side into these slots. And there is one slot for each piece, except the last one. That one is like a little opening on there. So make sure they all go all the way in without breaking them. So just push from the top. You should be all good. And then the last part that we need to do is to cut off the toothpick. You can just start it a little bit with a knife and it should break off fairly easy. If it doesn't, just finish it off. With the knife. And then same thing on the, on the opposite end. Alright, and then uh, part number 43, which is on the plate number 7, it's all the way in the bottom here, uh, that goes right in the center, just like that, and then the assembly that you just did on the previous step, with that uh, hook to the right, Uh, you will insert it number one towards you, you will insert it on the opposite end. So we can do the same similar thing as with the previous assembly. And one by one, just push them into the slots. Line them all, line them all up and push them in. And then the last piece you can kind of push it from the side. Make sure it's all the way in, nice and tight. Just like this. So you got one assembly rotating on this side and then another assembly on this. And then, uh, looks like we're done with this. Uh, put it aside for now. And we're moving on to the uh, pre-coating. Right, so there is uh, three ways that uh, you can do it. There is a little clarification on here. I'm gonna read it through for you. It says, by default, the safe is assembled with a standard combination lock code 321. So uh, if you're just gonna follow the first line on here, you can do that. To set another code during the assembly, you will need to replace the PAG numbers, or PAGs numbered, 48 and 49. There's a little pieces right here, 48 and 49 you will need to replace them in the different locations, uh, right? And then uh, there's three washers, which is uh, one, two, three, uh, the one that was falling out all the time on mine, 40, 40, 41, and 42. So you'll need uh, to replace those numbers into different slots. 
uh, you can either set a different uh, numbers by uh, using the table uh, and uh, the uh, have three three options I apologize so first option is just to set it one one zero seven it will make a code three to one the second option is to follow the rest of the table and set you have three options of so 641 872 and 876 or the third option is to uh, install them randomly and then you can find out the uh, combination later on during the assembly so I can show you how to do that uh, and that's what I'm gonna do at this time to see my random combination looks now there is a warning though that you should not be installing the these little pegs into the opposite slot so like if you install it in one do not install it in the opposite uh, on the opposite one uh, in num into number six so uh, you have two of them so you cannot put one, just let me pull them out right away, just uh, so I can show you. I'm gonna clean out these little fibers off and all the units. So you got, let's say, Take one, two, three. So if you use number one and put a bag in here, on the number two, do not put it into the opposite number. So opposite is six, do not put it into six. That will restrict the operation. So uh, they will need to be at the different locations. Um, so in uh, the final digit of the, of the code, which I would, uh, will depend on how the lock knob is set on the whole of the part 32 and after that in the door of the safe so it really depends how you're gonna set it into the door of the safe the correct position of the for the installation is marked on part 32 with errors in digits 1 6 and 2 7 do not install the lock knob in the slot without errors so if there is no error do not install it in there uh, which we're gonna go through a little bit later all right and uh, I'm gonna go ahead into the there's uh, instructions in all different kind of languages, so if you don't understand English, there's Ukrainian, Dutch, uh, French, Polish, Spanish, Italian, Turkish, Russian. Hopefully one of those languages will help, uh, help you out. I'm not sure if it's Dutch or if it's German, but one of them. So, now we need to start with part number three. And I'm gonna do random code. So you can just follow me along and uh, see how it's gonna work out at the end. Okay, uh, so if you follow the instructions, you're gonna have a basic code three, two, one, right? We're gonna go with uh, just the random numbers. Uh, so we do need numbers 49 and 48 so you got one number 48 and 149 okay then we're gonna take piece number three. Uh, if you wanna go to continue with uh, putting little lubricant on the outside face, on the inside of it, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do all three of them right away. So I don't have to come back to it later. So I broke off a little piece just to make it a little bit easier. So we're gonna take number three. Follow the instructions for three to one. Follow me. 
if you uh, want to do the random, the random numbers. And we use the 49 piece. Uh, here it shows to put in seven. We're gonna go ahead with the numbers facing you. Um, we're gonna put it into, let's say, number nine. Your number three should be on the bottom of that slot. Uh, you're not going to see it on the opposite end, but facing away from you, it should be right here. So that's where I'm inserting from number nine. And then uh, we're going to use uh, on number two, we should not be doing the opposite. So the opposite of number nine uh, two is the same way it should be on the bottom away from you on the bottom portion of that little cat out so uh, if you put it together you'll see that number nine is four uh, so we don't want to do four we can do any other one and we're going to do six so go ahead and insert into number six or whichever number you prefer to insert uh, i'm going to do six Nine, six, that sounds good. And we're gonna go put it right in the middle. Kind of like symmetrical. Then uh, we're gonna take the assembly that we just did. Uh, with this piece uh, lock, so to say, towards the left. Uh, take the number three uh, now the tag facing away from you the number should be facing towards you bottom left and uh, insert it into the first slot and then piece number two uh, same thing with the uh, numeral facing towards you on the bottom of that little opening and you put it in into slot number two right here and then with that we're gonna cover with a number 28 piece at the second one I apologize for the noises uh, so we're gonna put that right over the top. Here you go, full assembly, then just to make sure that they're in the right places, here you go, everything nice and locked. So we only have two of these little pieces in, inserted into the slots before completely assembling it. And then use a toothpick and push it through this little piece right here and make sure you adjust the uh, little circles to get the toothpick all the way through into the opposite end. And I got the first one stuck right away. My fingers are still a little bit covered in the two legs. Uh, so let's see, just work it in a little bit. Here you go. So just uh, to help you out a little bit, there's gonna be those little uh, circular pieces on one of the ends. If you insert the slots into them, it'll be easier to put the toothpick through. So it should go nice and smoothly in. We're gonna put that assembly over to the side right now. And 
and then uh, go back to the front cover or start with the front cover. Uh, front cover, first piece is going to be on plate number five. This is the one that we just took a little basis off of. Uh, and then once again, this is going to be front face. So I'm going to push it from the back. And then we need two pieces number 50. And number 50s are on the plate. that we just used, plate number seven, and the rear. I'm gonna push the black out, get the two 50s out. There you go. Um, you have the little new gear sign on here, so that make sure it's over to the, to, towards the right. So you're gonna see two slots on here. Um, that are kind of like parallel to each other uh, into one line right along the edge of that uh, edge of the let little cutout right here. So there's one piece goes in here, one in there with the hooks facing towards each other. Uh, so here's one and here's the second one. Then have uh, plate number 31, which is right here. And now uh, we're gonna push that out. And then it also has in the middle another part. Make sure you take that out before you full assembly. So we're just gonna actually, this is gonna be the front face. Um, so from the front towards the back because you don't want Anything on here, and that that one with a little you see the little screw drawn on here. That's gonna go uh, over the top on here and locking with those two little pieces that uh, we just made. And there is a little arrow right here. Make sure it's facing you. It's to the left side. And then you will need to uh, lubricate the internal portion right here. Then we'll take it out and lubricate it first. So there's going to be a mechanism inside there. And push it back in. Then we'll need piece number 33 which is on the same plate, number eight. There's 33 and 34. So make sure you take 33. And that's getting inserted from the bottom right here. Through the two plates to lock them together with the longer pieces going through. So again, just make sure they're in line. That way it's gonna go much easier. And then we do need to, oh, I forgot to take one little piece out. So I'm gonna do it right now with a little circle. And we're going to lubricate inside of that uh, little opening that we just created. All right. Then the next step, we're going to turn it in the back and uh, lubricate around that opening uh, to the actual surface. So right here. It's going to be a little mechanism. And then we need pieces 34, 36, 
236s right here on the play number eight. And number 34. So, part number 34 goes all the way on the top. Sixes uh, go one on the right and one on the left, and make sure when you're holding your assembly, um, I apologize, I took the wrong plate, so we're gonna scratch that off and uh, take number 34 out. Put it aside and go on uh, plate number 16, which is right here. It's the second plate on there. Uh, let's see. Just blocks, make sure I don't miss them. Put them on the site. That's a plate number 16. And, uh, We'll need the little uh, cutouts here towards you. Uh, we do need the lubrication on the front here. I lubricated the wrong one, but it's not a big deal. Remove excess if you want it to look nice and neat. And then uh, piece 34 goes on here. 36s go on the right and on the left hand side. And make sure there's little slots on those two pieces. So they're facing you when the 34 piece is away from you. So I'm gonna put one in here, one in here, and slide it all the way in. And then we need four toothpicks which is gonna go right into four holes in the middle. Don't push them all the way in, just uh, good enough so they're nice and tight on there. So, you can see four little holes right here. One, two, three, and four and we start off with the uh, gears number 39 uh, gears 39 are on a block number eight which are let's see right here and there are four of them Clean out the gears for the file. Um, if there's uh, any fibers left. I will have, uh, I will use the round file. It's just easier to get to them because you don't want them to be on the way for the operation. And there's two connection points, so make sure you clean off fibers in both of them so they're not on the way. You need lubrication, uh, so just kind of like stick them in there just to get some loop backs onto the gears. You can also use a toothpick and uh, do one by one um, every gear. 
but it's up to you. I'm just sticking them into here and uh, to, to make sure that we get some lubrication on there. Clean it up a little bit to make sure that it's nice and clean. And then you put those gears on top in, into, onto those toothpicks that we just inserted. There are four of them. And the next step is uh, part number 38 and 35. So 38 is on the same eight and 35 is right here also. So we're gonna do 38. And then 35. Uh, clean off excess material. to lubricate the gears. So this one's gonna be a little easy. And then this one's a little bit harder, so I'll use the toothpick to poke some out and then kind of like rub it through all the gears. This is uh, to ensure that you have nice and smooth operation because, uh, I mean, you, you, you don't need to use uh, lubricant as much, but uh, I do notice that it is uh, a little bit easier if uh, they are lubricated. So they'll adjust faster and it will be nice and smoother operation. So it's going to be pretty good. Um, when you put the wax onto your fingers, it's going to melt off a little bit, which makes it a little bit easier to put it onto the gear. Once again, clean it off your hands, highly recommend it, because uh, otherwise it'll transfer on pieces that you don't want to be on. So that one gear goes in the middle. And then the large one with the numbers facing towards the top go right above all of them. So it's kind of like this. And then just check, make sure it's operational, that all of them are rotating. Although they're somewhat loose, they should be still rotating on the axis. Now we move to the next page. And the next page, uh, the piece that we assembled prior. Uh, this is the front face. We're gonna put it right over that assembly with the toothpicks going through the other four holes on this part. So just make sure you get them in. And then kind of push it in very slowly. Don't force it too hard. And then you got to don't rotate it much either because the gears might fall out and then you have to take it apart again. Uh, don't worry about the toothpicks at this time. Um, And just make sure that all the uh, pieces go into their openings and slots. That's locked, 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 locked. So you're gonna have nice front cover assembled together it's good enough that I just material from here make sure it's not on the way there you go 
and then uh, push the toothpicks because they probably got offset a little bit through kind of like half a point let's make sure they're holding the parts right and then use the knife to chop them off um, I usually start it off break them off afterwards and then clean off the leftovers just like this make sure you don't cut any other pieces off The surfaces should be nice and clean. And then do the same thing on the opposite end. Just start it off. And that's what normally I do. Start it off and just break them off. And clean the surface a little bit so it's nice and smooth. front and back. So now we have that little assembly here. And then the next step, uh, do have that part that we took out earlier, uh, which is number uh, 32. And we need on the plate number five, we got three number 27s, take them out. And then you got the belittle gears, lubricate them. And then 22 and 23, which are on plate number five. Find it. And let's just hold in plate number five. I'm sorry, it's uh, correct. On plate number five. And I removed that block. Here's uh, numbers 22 and 23. We need them. Also, be careful with these pieces, same as. Uh, with the longer ones, uh, as they do tend to break if you're pushing it too hard. Now with this one, you have two little errors on here. So make sure those, uh, this is number 23 and then this is number uh, 22 piece. And then tw you hold it 23 in your right and then 22 push over. Uh, separate them slightly, make sure you don't break them apart. Um, so they're gonna be waiting for a long time to get a replacement for them. They're crucial pieces. And So I almost got it in, but I haven't quite yet. So keep on separating and pushing the 22 in. Here you go. A little more. Lubrication on the edges. Just to make sure you be able to insert all the nice pieces smoothly. And then we have um, those two areas towards you. Insert the three pieces of number 27 all the way through. Well, Errors don't really have to be 
for this particular operation. I'm going to remove excess wax just to make sure it's not on the way. And then, uh, so there is towards you, facing right here, two arrows facing towards you. And then make sure your zero is almost at the top uh, when the air, those arrows facing you. So uh, you won't be able to insert it any other direction. But there is a little arrow at one that you need to make sure that the other arrow matches that. And so I, you got that piece correct. And then this goes right into this front plate assembly. Uh, we did lubricate that part, which is good. Uh, and we do want to lubricate this back portion a little bit also, as it's going to be on the front face. So I'm just going to do a little loop, wipe my hands off. And then your one should match this little arrow right here when you insert into the slot. Let's see, you rotate the gears a little bit. So you rotate the back gear. Uh, let's see, you can probably use this piece. To make sure that two is right here. So one would be right around the arrow. And then you gotta do that one also faces the same direction right at the arrow and insert those two pieces together there you go so your one is right here and the other one is also somewhere underneath there like we did not need much lubricant and so I'm gonna remove it from these pieces from 27s later on all right so we got this and then uh, we need to take uh, two number 18 and 19 we got 19 here and then 18 A bunch of them up on the plate number five. So we just take one out. I'm gonna make sure we file it off a little bit. So our number 18 is going to go first, push it on, make sure it's all the way through, and then 19, same thing, I'm going to file it a little bit, going to go right into the same over the top. Hold it a little bit from the back because it does tend to pull out a little bit and it should be locked in place just like that. And the next step, uh, we're back to our numbering one and we need another number 49. Not 
take up number 49 and as I mentioned before I'm gonna randomly for, uh, for you it says if you following three to one code just put it into one and then for me uh, with the one facing towards left bottom of the slab I'm gonna choose a random number let's see make sure we don't do the opposite we got six nine so we can do uh, we can do four probably my assumption and we can't do one so I'll do a zero so we insert it into zero in our case that outside portion is already lubricated and I just the assembly the door assembly that I just did uh, we need to make sure that the arrows are facing between these two so with the this little hinges away from you handles are facing up and then uh, we put this piece on that direction with the number towards you then just like this so you got a little arrows facing these two little pieces, the slot facing away from the hinges, and then the little peg towards you on the outside. So we got that piece assembled. I'm gonna go on to the next portion, assembling the opening me mechanism, the one that we just did earlier. Uh, that one uh, with this little uh, portion sticking out going through the holes on the cover we can insert it just like this and then make sure your toothpick goes right into the center and then you snap it all in place alright this looks like some of my parts are falling out a little bit But once you snap it, it shouldn't be any problems. Here you go. You might need to adjust the directions to direction a little bit. So uh, it snaps a little bit easier. And then uh, insert the toothpick as far as you can. and uh, cut it off, make sure it doesn't go any further. Slice and cut. Then we use one of the rubber bands, uh, push it through the little hole, an extension. and lock it. On, the, on this little slots of the, I think it was 36. So we got one piece. Make sure it's nice and tight on there too, so it doesn't fall off. and extend it a little bit and bring the other portion over just like this so they have to be hinged right here or not hinged but uh sitting right over these slots kind of holding this piece upwards a little bit so check the operation everything should be good 
these pieces will not be operational right now. Make sure gears are rotating a little bit. So you should be good to go. And the next piece uh, is on our plate number seven. Which is to my right. I have the little dollar sign. And then front face, back face, this is front. Push it out. And then put a dollar sign in and lock it into the place. We did check all the operation, make sure it rotates the knob. So we're just gonna lock it. in place just like this although the image shows mirror for some reason our dollar sign but you can put it either way you want it facing back or facing front or mirror image or not mirror image and then the little uh, piece number 57 it's gonna lock it in place so just insert it on the bottom and lift it up a little bit and at the top just like this so it's gonna lock it in place it's not gonna go anywhere so that's what you're gonna have for this assembly okay so uh, we finished this step uh, assembling this piece right here with a little dollar sign uh, and then my battery died so uh, I didn't realize it until I pulled these pieces out we're on page 19 and uh, these are five of the number 18s, uh, number 21 and 20. So uh, we need to clean this off a little bit, uh, off of the little fibers. And uh, we need to make sure that they're nice and flat pieces, uh, nothing else, because they're gonna be rotating, spinning inside the assembly. So you want to make sure there is no fibers on there that will prevent it from nice and clean spins so taking these off using a little file uh, Just uh, make sure that the surface is nice and clean. Um, once again, you don't have to use a file. You can use uh, just a regular uh, sandpaper, but just uh, a minimum 150. Um, and just don't rub too much in order not to distort the surface too much. Or uh, We just wanna make sure that there is no, nothing sticking out and it's flat. Alrighty, so we got all the pieces and then this goes on top of this unit right here. So you got, um, also we do need to put a little bit of wax on them. So just rub them in the wax a little bit, all five pieces of number 18. and put them in. They're gonna go all the way inside into this little opening, just like that. As you can see, most of them fit right in and they go all the way inside the assembly all right uh, then we got number 21 which is gonna go facing the uh, dial
and then we have number 20 which locks everything in place and then use just a toothpick if you have some uh, wax left over in there just clean it off so to give it nice clean look um, I don't know why I put these into wax probably to make sure that my fingers slip when I try to open and to rotate it all right we'll wipe it off uh, use a little paper towel or napkin and get the wax off of this surface all right so now uh, we need 24 number 24 and we should have one two two for each of the hinges so numbers 24 pull all of them out push pull push them out Okay, so uh, we're gonna continue with the number 24. Push all, all these out, it's gonna be little hinges. And uh, we're gonna insert it, new gears. Um, just like this, uh, the little cross section facing over to the left and you do two hinges per uh, or two little things per hinge I should say Just like that, got all of the pieces, all eight pieces on there. Then, get to raise it up like this. And uh, find number six. Uh, push it out. So they need to be, these little openings need to face the hinges. And then we got two on the bottom here, two on the top. And we need to make sure that when you have the dollar sign, or not the dollar sign, the uh, U-gears down towards you, uh, the two, the hinges are on the right. So the two closer, larger holes are on top and then two holes on the uh, further apart, two large holes further apart, they're towards you on the bottom. So, and that's the way you insert it in. And then you gotta drop it in here. And open the hinges up a little bit. So uh, they fit right into here, into these slots. Kind of pull it, pull that whole thing towards you, so you can. Once you get the hinges in, uh, you don't lose them off track. And then one more, just like I lost one here. So just make sure that. It's still on. And we're 
tweak them a little bit. I rotate him. I'm rotating them a little bit so I can get them situated. So get it like that, and then uh, lower it down a little bit. Push it as far as you can, and get the hinges. We need to get the hinges pop right into these holes right there. So just like this. I don't know if you can see it right into that little holes right there so you gotta push push onto the assembly a little bit uh, pull, push on the pin pull a little bit on the assembly and get those in there just like that into those little holes all right Got all of those in, nice and tight. And they're supposed to be all the way in without any space in between. Just like that. So there is no space in between the plate and those little hinges. And then there is also number eight, which was also on that close to the dollar sign, little flat piece. It's just to uh, lock those hinges all together, uh, kind of double safety mark. And you put that right over the hinges in a similar fashion and push it all the way in so it's nice and flat against the surface. You do need to make sure that the hinges fall right in. Just like that. So we got the hinge ready. want to double check uh, that I have got that hinge right the first time uh, and I have because uh, this thing will not close right now because the lock it's locked so uh, we're gonna go to the next page and the next page are the instructions of how to uh, find um, the combination. So as of right now, um, it says, uh, after assembling the lock, do not close the uh, safe door until you have checked and rechecked that the lock code is working properly. Close the door only after the lock is completely assembled with all the parts installed, including the dollar symbol shaved back frame and, and the fixing bar 57. So, uh, before we got to all these steps, we were supposed to check if the lock is working, but um, this is a quick fix so we can remove the that little dollar sign to see, uh, to see the actual lock and check the lock. So, uh, we start out by rotating counterclockwise to clear the system off. And then we find the first number. Um, there's a little roller here uh, with the opening on the opposite end. And then when it clicks and sits into that roller with the opening towards the front, that's uh, the first number. And your first number is six. And then you rotate. Uh, clockwise, skipping your first number, and then until your second wheel matches the opening of 
with the for, uh, with the third with the wheel number three and we have one so it's a six one and then you rotate one more time counterclockwise finding a third opening and that the lock opens up and the third opening is a seven so we have six one seven that's my random number and then you can see that the door is open now completely now if I want to close it just move it over rotate it and we can check again 617 is my opening combination that's what I managed to get and uh, we'll check again so counterclockwise you spin it a, a, a few times just to clear the lock out so we find a six then we skip one and on the second try we get onto stop on number one rotating clockwise and then clockwise again oh I'm sorry counterclockwise and the number seven should open the door and it does and we get it open nice and beautiful all right so everything works we can put the dollar sign back on whichever way you prefer, the correct way or the opposite way. Um, it will go in and in only one direction, so uh, you might have one, or oh, we'll need to rotate it a little bit one way or the other to get it open. So you can get a remember the code is 617. And uh, we're gonna go with that. So everything is operational, everything checks out. And now it's time to install the uh, cover onto the box. So we got these pieces, your gears facing down. Uh, you take the box over and we insert that piece into the slots. Sure, everything lines up, everything matches. And we got almost all the sides in. You might want to work it a little bit to the left or to the right just to get all the bosses into the slots. Everything is locked and closed. So the door opens and closes right now. It's a little squeaking nice antique noise, so to say. And then we need number 10, 13, and 17. So uh, we got number 10. And uh, there's a plate number three, little board. Number 10 goes right right about the door uh, there's uh, two slots the ones that I mentioned before that have to go away from you it's just to lock the door make sure it's nobody can break into your uh, uh, safe then we're looking for number 13 I got here and one of the first pieces that we used. And on that one we do have a warning which says to make sure to insert it, my assumption to insert it in the base on the bottom. So that one goes right to the bottom. And then number 17, which is right here, on the board number five. That's going to go to the side. Cover the lock, just like that. Uh, now, step number three is uh, we're looking for piece number 63. Uh, 
And piece number 63. It does not show on which board. Oh no, it does. It's on board six. We put it on when the door facing you on the left hand side, there's a little hole. So just insert it in there all the way in. And then there is uh, one of the boards, uh, which is going to be number 61. Um, towards you because this is the front face. You insert it into the slots on the left hand side. Just like that to cover that piece, 63 piece that you just put in there. And then uh, we get one of the longer pieces that's 69. And lock it all up by put, putting just like the other ones. Make sure, once again, make sure you uh, match the holes and have them, have them lined up. And then we need uh, two more number 68s. Which are on the same board number five. We insert them to lock that uh, piece up. Just like this. So the little square piece not going to go anywhere. Um, they're not going to fall out. Here we go. Nice and neat. Uh, then uh, we're going to do the top portion next. Um, that piece already fell out, it says your gears on here. And then when we insert into the top with the U gear sign facing you. And then uh, number 69 piece. Two sixty-eights to lock it down. And now uh, here, as I'm doing that. I'm noticing a mistake that I just made, so uh, I'm going to show you that we can fix it fairly quickly. And the mistake that I made is that this piece that I put in, I put it the wrong way, so we're just going to pull this piece out, two of them. Gonna use a little piece of, uh, just to, to help myself a little bit. Don't yank it very hard because uh, this is plywood and you might be breaking it. So just use it as a lever. Here we go, I pulled one out, and then we're going to pull the second one out as well. Rotate the piece just to get a nice surface and it looks all symmetrical. Line up the holes and reinsert the little pieces.
to like this place. And uh, now we're off to the final site. Uh, we do need one more 63. Put it into the hole on the right hand side. Insert it all the way in. Um, take the board out with the little screws. Insert into the slots. And then uh, one last piece of 69. Make sure you put it the correct way so you don't have to fix it. It's just what I had to do on the last piece. And get the piece in lined up with the holes and cover it up with uh, lock it down with the 68s. Now we got uh, two 64s with a little holes in them. And those are back of the unit. There's two holes that are left. And you just put them all the way in. Just like that. Next page, uh, we do have a uh, piece number 59. Nice little shelf. And that shelf goes right inside the unit onto those. If you can see it just right into those little slots into the little pieces that we put in um, just right in there and a few more of the steps uh, we got number fives and, and fours that were one of the first plays that we used on plate number two so get number Kind of hard to see behind the big piece of uh, material. Uh, you've got number fours go on the bottom, and number fives go at, on the top. And if you look inside the safe, those are the these outside pieces that we put in. Top one has two slots and the bottom one has two slots further apart. So number fours will go into the bottom ones. And number fours are the ones with the little thicker bosses. Okay, they're gonna go into the base and a little bit through into the bottom piece of the unit. It's kind of I'm gonna lock everything together. And that's gonna be a little struggle because it is too hard to reach in. So we're gonna try with the right side first. It goes right in smoothly and just push it in so it's flat with that surface over here. Then we're gonna do the same on the right hand side. 
Once you get it in, it should be good. And just push it in a little bit. And then number five is gonna go on the top. That one's a little bit easier. Got one piece in. Gotta line it up with a hole in the top cover. Here you go. And push it in flat against the surface. Same thing on the other side. Just gotta wiggle it around to get that into the hole. And we got it in. Next is uh, numbers 37. And we have a whole a lot of them here on a plate number eight. Push them out. They're pretty tiny little cute pieces. So be a little careful not to break them off. You do have three spare ones just in case. Kind of wiggle them in and out and then they're going to come out fairly easy. Right? Once you break the little connectors. And we have total one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got six out. And then one of the pieces, one of the first pieces I did, I broke off a little side on there, so I'm gonna use one of the spares just uh, to have a nice clean look. Here you go, uh, spares we're gonna put aside. And then those go, right, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes on the top cover, right in front. Um, and then we have to, the holes will need to line up. So there's a little holes in each one of them. Insert them as deep as you can to flush them out. Just like that. All eight pieces. And the holes need to line up on the axis. So uh, this little feature will give a nice look to the safe. Make it look very nice and presentable. Good decorative piece that can go into your uh, fireplace. Well, not too close to fireplace, as it is plywood. Might get start burning. We just need four toothpicks and uh, insert it through those little holes as far as you can until you they're somewhat even and symmetrical. I'm gonna have to work them in. A little bit so they'll sit nice and tight just like that we got four of them
Yeah, and I, one of those broken pieces I used. So I'm gonna replace it really quick. Just like that. So we have four toothpicks uh, sticking out, and then we're gonna use our knife in order to remove these. Uh, cut them nice and flush from two sides. Put a little more pressure, it will break up obviously and uh, might create a little cleaner look. Just don't put too much not to cut other spots. Apologize for the noises. We do have a newborn, which is not very happy right now. And looks like we're done with that piece. And actually, we're done with the whole assembly. So uh, you can make this safe uh, piggy bank. Uh, there's a little slot right here. You can push it out and uh, put coins in there, which uh, makes it a nice feature. Uh, very nice, interesting toy for kids. Uh, or one or two or three. So you need to get more than one. Uh, then there is an instructions also how to remove uh, in case of emergency if you forget the code uh, or something locks up and you do need to take it out so there is a on page 27 you can follow step by step and that's about it so as I remember correctly our code was 617 so uh, gonna go ahead and lock it up we'll rotate it counterclockwise first to lock it. You'll see that little lever rise up. Gotta clear it out. Uh, first thing to clear it out, just spin it uh, two or three times, uh, about three revolutions. And then uh, after you do that, we'll start, we'll need to match the numbers to, well, I'm kind of holding it. We'll need to match the numbers to this little um, uh, arrow. So the first one, we're going counterclockwise. So the first number was six. Got it here. You can uh, kind of hear a little click in there. So this is another feature that uh, if uh, you accidentally forget the code, you can find it yourself by listening to it. So kind of like break the code on the safe. Uh, so the, then you go clockwise, skipping the number one and stopping on the second one. And then going counterclockwise again to number seven. And when you get to it, the little lever snaps off. You just move it a little further and open the door. So it doesn't really lock on its own. You just gotta rotate the dial a little, a little bit to lock it counterclockwise. One, once again, spin it two, three times, two, three revolutions, start with number six, clockwise, skip one, stop on the second one, and go clockwise again and stop on number seven to open it up. Done. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the procedure that I went through is just a random number uh, it's easy to remember hopefully three digits uh, if not you can follow the instructions uh, a little table on inside and uh, so this is the safe uh, looks very nice and neat um, as a decorated piece uh, if you have any questions comments uh, feel free to leave them underneath the video or uh, you can email me at uh, ukidstoys at gmail.com. It's U-K-I-D-Z-T-O-Y-S at gmail.com. Um, also, you can go on my website, ukidstoys.com, uh, to purchase another one. Um, 
and uh, leave comments or uh, suggestions under the video. Thank you very much. Um, till the next time. Bye.